What up, YouTubers? Trucker J back doing a check-in. Haven't uh, done a video in a while. Figured I'd do it. Is the lighting okay in here? Hold on. Got a bunch of buttons. That's the right one. Nope, that shut it off. Anyways, so I am here in Harrisburg, PA. Was so glad to get out of New York and New Jersey area. Um, as soon as I got back from my trip to Alaska, they sent me up there. It was 1,100 mile run. Uh, it was a nice run. I uh, didn't want to turn that one down because I've been gone for a week. But I could have used the money for sure. And I got a weird hair calic thing going on. Sorry, don't pay attention to that. Um, so uh, anyway, so I just got uh, back out of there uh, this morning. Man, I tell you what. I absolutely hate going to New York and New Jersey. The traffic is unbelievable. There is just hundreds of thousands of millions of people on the road. There is not enough road for everybody to be on. What are you doing, Stevens? Oh, he's parking in the reserve spot. Um, anyways, so there's not enough um, roads and space in there. Everything is condensed and small. There's just so much traffic. I I get stressed out <laughs> driving uh, in those areas. So I typically do not go up there. Um, I just don't like it. I don't enjoy it. Uh, the traffic is bad. You get stuck up there in the traffic for a few hours, depending on what time you drive. If there's any kind of weather issues, that also will keep you there longer than what you want to be there for so um, so it's good to get out of there had a little bit of a issue uh, getting a load this morning so I finished my run up about three o'clock in the afternoon yesterday I had about four hours left on my drive clock um, they couldn't find me a load so I went ahead and parked at a truck stop that was down there it used to be like a mom and pops truck stop but uh, pilot had uh, taken it over bought it out did whatever they remodeled it a little bit with all the you know pilot stuff on it really weird creepy place I gotta say the uh, truck parking was like way behind the building around the corner no lights whatsoever so I had my little flashlight because I didn't want to be uh, you know taken or something being back there um, but uh, anyway so um, finished up my 10 hour break got up this morning at about six o'clock and i'm looking at the qualcomm and i'm like where's where's my load i i need a load so i'm calling and calling it's the weekend there's not that many dispatchers or people that answer the phone the weekends it is extremely frustrating being a driver out here trying to get a hold of them on the weekends i don't know what's going on but if anybody from total is listening y'all need to fix that because about me and 1,999 other drivers are getting a little bit frustrated with that. Anyways, so kept calling, calling, sending messages. Finally, about 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock this morning, uh, finally gets a message back saying, you know, are you ready to go? And I'm like, I was ready at 6 o'clock this morning. But you guys didn't answer the phone or the messages, so you all didn't know that. Oh, there we go. Open up the blinds there. I love my curtain, by the way. I love, can, can you see my curtain? Oh, my curtain. Oh, it's a nice curtain. Nice curtain. All right, creepy weirdo. <laughs> my other truck didn't have this curtain. It just had the one on the back. So this truck, I've got one that uh, goes over the whole front that goes all the way around. So I don't have to necessarily keep this one closed. It gives me a little bit of extra space moving around. Um, when I'm not wearing pants. Anyways. <laughs> so, um, finally got a load, or what I thought was a load. So he calls me up and he's like, hey, um, so FedEx is begging and pleading um, for a empty trailer. They need to have one. Uh, it's about a three hour drive where you're at. Uh, would you mind giving them your trailer? And I'm like, well, I like my trailer. I need my trailer to do other runs. If you can find me another trailer that's close by, cool, no biggie, I'll give up my trailer. 
So I drive down there, I go to FedEx, I drop off my trailer, and uh, send the message, okay, here, I'm done, drop off the trailer, send me my new load information. Sorry, I'm smoking. My vape uh, coil died. I need to get some new ones. Um, so I'm, again, calling them and sending messages, trying to get a response back. No response back. About 40 minutes later, um, they're like, why did you drop off your trailer? And I'm like, I, I don't want to go through all this over again. I'm like, just call me. So he calls me up. I explain the whole situation. I'm like, hey, this morning, needed a load. They said there wasn't very many up there right now to get me moving. They wanted me to come down here to PA, drop off my trailer. There's supposed to be another trailer here or somewhere so I can take it to my next load, which is here in PA, but it's a live load. I have to have a trailer to be loaded so I can leave. Where's my trailer? I, I need a trailer. So the dispatcher's like, are, are, are you serious? I'm like, no, I'm making this up. Yes, I'm serious. He told me to drop it here. Like, do you guys ever read messages? I mean, I got, I got, I got a whole thing here with messages on it. Always, always, always send messages over the Qualcomm if they have you do anything weird or out of the ordinary or whatever. Because if you send them a message, then there's a record of it. If they call you over the phone, you can't prove that. Joe Smo told you to go here and drop this off and then bobtail it somewhere else. So, pro tip, make sure you always send a message that we have record of it and proof of it. So, yeah, I tell him, I'm like, yeah, you know, so-and-so told me to drop it here. There's supposed to be another trailer around here somewhere so I can pick it up and go to my next load. I still have five hours on my drive clock at this time because I started super late. And my next pickup is only two hour drive away. So I'm trying to get on it. You know, I sat, you know, I didn't drive for a week. I was up in Alaska. Like I want, I want some miles. Like I want some money. Like, let's go make it rain. So I'm like, I got five hours. I can go there, pick up the trailer and then start heading down to where I need to drop it off at and be there super early and start getting some miles and some money. This will free me up so I can do another load. Because we have to have payroll turned in by Tuesday. Today is Saturday. So I'm trying to bust out a couple more runs. And he's like, all right, well, you know, give me a few minutes. Let me figure something out. So again, another 30 minutes goes by. And I'm like, bro, like, what what are we doing here? And he's like, I don't know why he told you to do that. There's no trailers around that I can find. All the trailers are at least a couple hundred miles away from where you're at. A couple hundred miles away from where I'm at. So basically, and I still have three hours of drive time on my clock right now, BTW, FYI. So basically I've wasted half of a day here where I could be driving and uh, getting some miles. So a little irritated about that. This is the first time that it's happened. I don't really know what's going on, if it's the planner's fault, if it's dispatcher's fault, or night weekend dispatcher's fault, or what, but it's it's frustrating. So I'm sitting here at a truck stop, uh, a pilot truck stop. This one has a very small parking area. Since I don't have a trailer, um, I can just park in like a normal you know car truck parking space, which is really nice because they only have, here, I guess I can show you. They only have like maybe 10 or 15 spots. That's it. So right where you see that sign over, those are reserved spots. Uh, you have to pay to park there. I think it's like 12 or 15 bucks uh, to park there. A lot of these truck stops are starting to do that now where they are uh, taking up uh, portions